SC Gang. Oh, yo. Hi, Fino. I know when I've been wanting to car vlog for the longest while. I know because people keep on link me up on Instagram. And guys, if you haven't followed my Instagram as yet, it's St. Best Cars. You see me? And my personal Instagram is bread underscore sofa. Person's been link me up talking about the build. Guys, kind of sorry if the, the place windy. I am in Portmore. You see me? So that the, the sea, so you know how that go. But, um, person's been a link me and I say, yo, them rate the build on the B13 and I encourage me to keep on doing my thing. You see me? And I have a surprise for today. This guy, we've been I communicate back and forth on Instagram. You see me? He's a cool youth. Link him up on the up, man. He can reason about anything. Link him about him car and we talk and reason is a cool youth. You see me? We've been to do a video for a while now, but it's just that every time I come up here, I'm working. Every time I come Kingston side, me I work. So we never really get to do nothing. And I come up this weekend to shoot a music video and to do a photo shoot. And I was like, yo, I mean, at the place, what are going? So, I'm going to pull up and we and I'm going to see what are going. You see me? There's a possibility it's going to be more than one car, so I don't know how that go. Stay tuned, I'm linked me and send up on anyway. And Jetta, I know the Jetta boss. May I stop you a while ago and you drive past me, because you know, well, everything good still. I am a boy, you see me? I mean, your place and you have link me up, but you, your, your car is for our next vlog. That is coming very, very soon, guys. Probably when I see that next week, I'm not sure if I get a link to him, but in the next clip, I'm going to see what I'm going Who I'm going to follow up on the vlog this week or the persons who are going to follow up on the vlog this week. So stay tuned, subscribe, soon forward. So we woke up and look we woke up on people. It's alright. So for the persons them who don't know you, please introduce yourself and the year car you're driving. Yeah man, um Leo, otherwise known as Static. Yeah. I drive a 2008 Honda card CL8, the four-wheel drive version of the CL7. Um yeah, my ride. All about the static life. Alright, static. Alright, so guys, full disclaimer. The sun is extremely hot. And the wind blows, so just bear with me. Sorry, right, so Leo, can you explain a little bit about the what you say stance? <laughs> for persons who don't know what that term means, explain, elaborate a little about that for me. Uh, stance have various meanings to everybody. Basically, how you set the suspension on the car. Yeah. Um, usually, the general meaning of stance is any lowered car, really, but there are different variations of lowering the car, you can tuck the wheels, you can have the wheels flush with the fender, you can have poke, you know, mostly like where it's most of the pro box and them and they have and some of the fit. So it depends on how you set the suspension, but I'm about that low static life and I've always been about that life. The, for me personally, I don't really know about anybody else, but for me personally, I didn't know about the stance life, I know about like the camber. Okay. Yeah, because I watched a lot of YouTube and it was always about some camber. Mm -hmm. So that's what I knew about. And then actually I came across your car. Mm -hmm. You see me? And then I kind of know about the whole stance thing and it's been a favorite ever since. So, um, all right. So basically, guys, what I'm going to let him do for us is you see how the car is situated. So. I'm going to let him start from the rear end of the car and work his way around to the front and talk about all of the modifications that has been done to the car personally. So take it away, Leo. All right, so first owner in Jamaica got it from a bonded warehouse. Have this car decade now, um, mm -hmm. had it fully stock. Most of the people have been following the gram before the page was open because it was private, would know the car back in the days as just JD McCard, um, TSX because um, Basically, I've been a big follower of the TSX, which is the American version of the Honda Accord. And so, I like how those guys set the cars. And I've always had a global influence in terms of setting my car. So, got the car fully stock. Um, this is a Honda Accord CL8, as I told you. So, the CL8 comes the highest out of all the CL7, CL8, CL9. And, of course, Acura TSX. Um, so, this car was about 8 
nine inches off the ground at stock. Come with regular hubcaps, no body kit. Um, yeah, so started from there. First mod I ever did, of course, was get rims. You know, it's a Jamaica thing to get the car you put on the rims. So got some 18 by eight and a half rims by 30 offset, you know. Started like a sim started simple. Then after the rims thin the car, um, gave it to auto traders and they put on a special tint. Just tell them so I don't want them too dark but nothing too light. And then I always like the double muffler. So I of course went to muffler specialist and created a custom Y pipe and split of course a single muffler into a double muffler. Of course now you have the double muffler, the car it had a off balance look in terms of from the rear. So like we said, we started from the rear, the first thing I had to do was ensure that I got a body kit that would show that double muffler um, opening and so I went for the rear me again and of course we didn't want to just keep the flavor regular so we did it custom and got a custom rear me again that gave the car a fatter look, very very fat look. Um, of course the car was still high in the air but that would have been the last thing that I would work on suspension. Um, went around and finished up the body kit with the Mugen rear side skirts um, just to keep the flow and I initially started with the A-spec front lip um, which sits pretty high from the stock bumper um, so I had that for a while after finishing with the body kit went inside did the headliner custom suede black just to darken the interior a little bit of course straight led because we're all about the led so changed out all those lights after that next mod that i wanted was the headlights I've always been into headlights so i have link up tristan from goon services and attempts to look i want the halos um one of the first persons to rock in halos way back then um he set it up um and it had that clean factory look so Tristan, big up that work. As a matter of fact, Tristan will tell you most of the cars that came team came with my picture saying the one, those halos. All right, so after we finish with that now, I said, all right, let us see if we can start up, neat up the car now. And start with the hick visors, which is the hick door visors and just continues around to the roof visors. After that now, I decided I was going to lower the car. And to lower the car. So this is where it started getting serious now. Um, the CL8 front axles are pretty flimsy. Um, so when I went to seek advice, one of the first thing was that I was told that I would need to change that. So I changed out the CL8 axles to uh, axles from another car, refused to set up because that is one that I'm very proud of. Um, I had to machine those axles for about two days. I'll never forget it. Um, because I had also changed the spindles from the CL8 so I'm rocking the pair of front spindles from a regular UR. Um, so it's UR spindles with custom axles which was machined to fit in the transmission and the wheel hub. After we changed out those, um, I got a brand new rear lower subframe. Also did that work in Portmore, most of the people them would know we did that right in my backyard um, with of course a mechanic big up doing big up doing um, so all of that was stiffened up and we also pushed the engine up just a bit to ensure that when i decide to go low the car wouldn't um, have the transmission or engine slamming on the ground even though luckily for this car the rear subframe is below um, the transmission and engine unlike the bmw that kind of have trouble with that issue and then after that i just drop it on some h and springs you know first in time i'm gonna go low m car if you have money for coilovers or ear suspension you got lowering springs or cut springs but i'm not a fan of cut springs because i've always been into spring rates and how the car handle so personally i never like cut springs so went h and r straight from germany quality always also not a fan of tn um tn is is more on the comfort side and i'm more of the performance yeah more of the, the the rigid feel all right i have to be careful so we don't want Alice Paris <laughs> with the wrong idea you understand um so yeah h and r that loaded car about two two and a half inches at the front and three inches at the rear i gave the car a okay look and i was rocking the a spec then i decided to take it serious and um go coilovers and link up bc racing coilovers because when i was looking online most of the application would have been for the honda card cl7 cl9 and of course tsx they didn't um have a research area that worked 
in building Culver's for the Sailor, which is a four wheel drive model, which is heavier than all of those cars. And so we started working um, to see if we could get some custom spring rates and custom dampers. Um, got my first set like about March. Uh, I was under warranty, but directly from them, thankfully, because we figured some things would probably go wrong and lo and behold, they did go wrong. Within the first three months, those dampers were done. Um, the spring rates just couldn't manage the weight of this car. It was probably more suitable for CL7. a CL7 or a TSX. And we're talking about the rears because that rear diff and that drive shaft give this car a heavier. It is heavier, all right? And so after we mash up those dampers and springs, um, link them up under warranty just paid for shipping didn't pay for, pay for parts so we got BC racing I got my second set of springs which was about 20k um, those lasted for another two months again and the dampers were also out um, so I went to the germ board the car was out for two weeks and um, back and forth with the technical team we came up with dampers and custom spring rates of course Swift Springs because we we've gone Swift Springs from the second set to ensure that the car would be able to go at this particular height and keep drivability and of course be rigid and somewhat comfortably enough to handle the Jamaican roads and so it's custom spring rates custom dampers and also custom heights um, that's rocking with this car then of course one of the most um, known thing about the car is the headlights yeah I've always been a well like I said, I was rocking the halos from Tristan, big up that, put the car on the map. Um, but you know, every time I pass the BMW, BMW man never like them, I say, give up my light, you know? I carry the room light. And of course, by 2016, 2017, you now everybody would now be rocking the halo lights, you know? First month anybody do is like putting the halo ring. So um, I lost that unique vibe, and anybody would know me, you know, so me as a man would like my car set a different way. Um, so I decided again, go back to the roots and take something from my car brand, which is the Honda slash Acura. And I've always been a fan of the TLX light, RDX light. Um, those um, lens were just beautiful to me. And so I link up my bridging and we just work on it and we made it happen. And now I'm rocking the one of one in Jamaica, which is the 2017 TLX lights. One of one? One of one in Jamaica. Um, these lights are so custom that I am able to adjust the beam pattern in terms of up or down, how low, it, how high or low it can go. I will also added the RGB function, so you know we can rock a beam and I set up our feel blue to the rock the blue, you know. All right, so and me know, me know, me know, me know. Say the viewers them, how feel you under this? Because you've been talking for approximately ten minutes. Is there anything on the car that is not custom? That is not customized by you? No, nothing? Nothing. Got this car bone. Bone stock? Bone stock. Bone stock. There's nothing on this car that anybody added any flavor without me. I didn't buy this car second hand. Um, so, so everything on the car is me. So I can talk about the car for hours. And I know the history of everything. There's a story behind every panel. See, this is this is this is the reason why, like I was saying first before we were on camera, that this car is one of one of the the the, the, the reasons why I kind of fell in love with the Accord brand. This and Neil's Accord Euro R. Yeah, the red you one. See me? Yeah, look up Neil. You've done an extraordinary job on this Accord. Trust me. Guys, when you can hear the amount of customization, like a lot of persons might order just go rims, put on probably like a little um, bumper flare, and you know, them little stuff, they and leave it like that. You go fully custom, like fully custom. Fully custom. Um, like I said, I'm really into suspension. So the rims was probably one of the most, what you call closest thing or dearest thing to me because I'm about that JDM life and JDM is in my game so if you got JDM and you want to go hard JDM if you're not going to work wheels you have to go thank you um, so RPF ones without a doubt wasn't was it was a no-brainer my previous rims were 28 pounds per wheel my current rims 28 are 28 pounds per pounds wheel per wheel so the four wheel them yeah, yeah look do the mats I'm 100 pounds do the mats what happened is that cast rims yeah, heavy 
20 years. Yeah, about 100 pounds. Yeah, about. Yeah, man. Cast rims heavy. And with all the work that I told you that we did with the car and some of the other works. And people know if you watch other vlogs, you mention yeah. them. Most of the time, I forget the things I'm going to see. Um, but um, we couldn't rock back cast rims because the suspension was no tuned. Um, so we went, we, I went free flow. It was a no brainer. It was either that or Ford. So custom built with the suspension needed a good rim and so RPFM was the way to go of course um, at first when I did the setup I never intended to do big brakes um, it just so happened that one of my front calipers did the time um, and the piston was seizing up and I said you know what I'm not going to remanufacture it let me go Brembo and so I have also a one on one one of one in Jamaica custom front Brembo which you know um just give the car a different look how many people can say they have a one of one custom brembo on their car um also earlier i heard you said you have this car for about a decade so how long would you say it took after getting the car you started customizing the car and how long from the period where, where you started to know it took you to put the car where it is at now so there are different approaches to customizing a car. If you know, say you're probably one of those people who run through cars, you know, probably just like set a car, etc. Get the next one, move on. Um, you tend to do those things pretty fast. So you yeah. find a guy with those cars two or three years. Because it's not a car that I intend to sell or anytime soon. And basically from when I buy this car, it's been part of the family. What do you say? Bon up title. <laughs> bon up title. And so you find that I take I take the customization of a period of time. Yeah. I do it very slow and do it proper because I don't intend to sell the car. So it's been roughly eight to nine years of getting the car to look like this, but the customization started from day one. That have to take two dedications still. Like, especially when if you are going the custom, like oh yeah, go custom. Because when it's a custom, when I talk about like, mm -hmm. Buy when I talk about like buy a, a, a Honda EK front lip and fit it on a B30, like what me would have done. <laughs> Your custom totally different because mm -hmm. he has a machine shop and two day worth a machine shop for that work on that. A different kind of custom that they really need props. I feel like this accord deserve more recognition, and that's why I tell people say, and you know, too, because I always link up and say, Yo, I need a feature yeah, up on the channel because I feel like this accord is one of the most underrated accord uh, underrated vehicle overall in a jamaica as you can hear the amount of customization where he has done to the car um also just to finish up the body kit um after we got that car two inches off the ground um we basically went custom top one motors i've always liked splitters but decided i didn't want the regular splitters so i link up custom motors um top one motors and ask them do you make splitters for the TSX and of course that was a no um, so we spoke to them and they made custom side splitters for me and front so I'm working one of one custom top one splitters that's another thing you know how much one of one do you actually have on the car well, I, all right, I'm gonna show you how my tech it's unique and certain things different and it's now my just a little thing to me even my Accord badge that you see right there my age is custom um, that's not the one that come on the car that is actually black chrome or oem jdm custom badges so even a badge of a custom trust me stunts work guys stunts work
So, Leo, mm -hmm. question, because I was watching the car a while ago mm -hmm. when I was doing some driving shots, right? And I was thinking to myself, like, is it different? Or, or does it feel weird being this low on the ground? Or, you know, you have to maneuver certain potholes or so forth. Is it challenging to, like, actually know, say, all right, I have to catch the car this way mm -hmm. for the whole bump and everything go over good? At first, um, that would, that's a challenge. But yeah. my advice to anybody who going to lower their car to this level or close or at all is um just practice so like i said when lowering springs so that in itself would have be a certain height and then when i went coil overs before i went extreme low um i had the car five inch four inch three inch two so inch basically you take it a stage take it in stages so what yeah. you do is master each individual height if you have the benefits of coil over and you will find that it make it much easier. Yeah, so you know what this height it just becomes normal because I would have taken it in stages. Um, so it's not challenging for me. And then what helps me? I'm trying to really press the throttle because I see the car kind of. Yeah, got, yo. <laughs> honestly, it was surprising when we see you take on it a little bit. Yeah. Well, a, a K20, right? K24. K24. Sorry, K24. So you know you have a look pep in a step, boy. Because it is slow, you know, really practice it. True. Yeah. But yeah and the muffler them sound really nice too. Yeah, man, I'm not them so nice. Most people normally surprise if I do step in it. Yeah. Um, the car is a lot peppier than the other spec because it comes original K20. I had to swap in a K24. Um, those who know, who know me know I'm to the first engine, second engine, never that feel it. And so we just got 24. But like I said, in terms of the height, it's just practice. Yeah. But what is also beneficial to me is that the spring rates are very rigid. So because they're rigid um, and not worrying about the car dipping too much yeah so um, but for anybody who's going to lower the car like I said it's best to take it in stages if you can um, that helps especially if it's car over don't just put it to the height that you want just take it down gradually and learn the height and eventually after a while no matter what height you're driving it will become second nature all right so guys this is where we're gonna close out this week vlog is it me thank you for tuning tuning in thanks to Leo for giving us a nice feature on the bad are called stance work is it me so Leo I'm going to give you the final words to close out the vlog anything you want to say anybody you want big up yeah, man. you know big up everybody in the car community as the car community is one I hope that everybody can continue to get along and just motivate and push each other remember say your style may not be a next man's style you know you will come and say boy I'm not like low car but you must understand say my driver Toyota and some people they will like Toyota children big them up and of course my extended family static ja without them trust me wouldn't they so you know stance as we gonna finally look a walk around at the car you see me finally look a walk around Leo, really, really, really want to say oh, big up, respect for your feature. One link. Respect for your feature, respect for your feature. And we definitely, if we come back this side and you don't know, we can link up again and want to look at vibe. Any local, any local modifications you choose to do to the car, we we'll link up again and we can get a part to see and we. So big up again.